by American defense satellites, incidentally, the landing of an unknown object near two American-operated air bases in Britain in 1980, the Bentwaters case just referred to, the appearance of large boomerang-shaped craft north of New York City during the 1980s, military records describing attempts to intercept UFOs by the nations of Europe, South America, Africa, Australia, and Asia, the appearance of triangular craft throughout the United States, Europe, and the Soviet Union, including the attempted interception of a triangular aircraft by Belgian F-16s in 1990, and numerous sightings of anomalous objects in Earth orbit by Soviet and American astronauts, in particular those in the shuttle program. This study also presents an analysis of UFO secrecy itself, throwing light on areas that have long operated in darkness. I have tried to analyze the structure of power behind the scenes. I've tried to describe black budget and special access programs and how they factor into this. Studying the relationship of military versus corporate secrecy of the UFO phenomenon. And I have attempted to provide a geopolitical analysis throughout to bring the topic of UFO secrecy into the mainstream of historical understanding. Finally, I am happy to mention that this study provides a first ever analysis of the history of UFO research itself. I have recreated the discussions and debates concerning the topics that polarized UFO research during these years, such as alien abductions, animal mutilations, intelligence community infiltration into UFO research, the controversial MJ-12 documents, the Gulf Breeze controversy, claims about reverse engineering of alien technology, crop circles, and much more. I've also studied the effect of new technologies, such as the internet, on UFO research. I have attempted to provide a thorough and complete history of the phenomenon, the secrecy, and the response by researchers who sought to understand this mystery. Behind it all is a backdrop of a world in technological, economic, and political transformation. UFOs and the national security state, the cover-up exposed, is my attempt to take the reader through a fascinating turning point in the history of the UFO phenomenon, as well as the history of the modern world. The book is due for publication in June 2009. I would encourage you to visit my website, keyholepublishing.com, for announcements of publication and availability. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, the press releases for uh, the book will be up here. Uh, please, uh, the key press, the working press, please, not the attendees, take those. I'm going to do a in personal indulgence at this time, since it's appropriate given his book, and to also make an announcement myself. Uh, as of about, oh, I don't know, it's been about 10 days. Uh, uh, Grant Cameron, Canadian researcher, uh, wonderful fellow, good friend, who for the last 11 years has been researching the intersection of this issue and all of the United States presidents back to Roosevelt and has compiled through extent many hours in the presidential archives and the national archives a very substantial dossier regarding that. And I have been in, uh, 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 in a co-authored mode for a number of years uh, attempting to get th this book published. We attempted to do it in 2003 and were turned, by, turned down by every New York publishing company. As of 10 days ago, uh, we were uh, signed up with Overlook Press in New York, which is run by publishing legend Peter Mayer, former head of Penguin Books and Avon Books. They're very excited, and they, will, they have um, offered a uh, full release of the book, which will be U.S. Presidents and UFOs, The Untold Story, probably. Uh, and this will be written by uh, Grant and myself, and it will cover uh, that topic. And the key sections of that book will uh, uh, focus on the Clinton administration and the Carter administration. Uh, there are many people in the book connected to the issue who are living and still involved in public service. Um, they include Jimmy Carter, Marsha Smith, former President H.W. Bush, <coughs> former President Clinton, C 
current Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Governor of New Mexico Bill Richardson, former uh, Head of Transition and former Chief of Staff to Clinton John Podesta, Melvin Laird, Sheila Widnall, um, former Head of the Office of Society Technology Policy Dr. John Gibbons, and others. We will make every effort to interview these people so that they, one, can provide their own first-hand account of what we are writing about and also to ensure that we get it right. And so we are certainly looking forward to having the opportunity to interview these individuals regarding this subject. I hope that perhaps they are looking forward to it too. I guess we'll know soon enough. Now, I wish to bring forward another speaker from the X conference. He is an exo political activist and a political activist before that, going back many, many years. He's been involved in multiple projects. He uh, has a Juris Doctor from Yale, currently lives in Canada, and um, he has a, another initiative he's working on with a number of individuals, and he wants to announce a, a developments there. Would you come forward, Alfred Weber? <laughs> the press releases on this are going to be up here as well. You can come and get it later. Yes, Steve, thank you very much. I'm Alfred Lambermont Weber of the Institute for Cooperation in Space, and I'm making this statement on behalf of a citizen's initiative uh, led by Ambassador John McDonald of the Institute for Multitrack Diplomacy, who's, who's here with us, as well as Dr. Michael Sala of the Exopolitics Institute, who is with us, and Victor Vigiani of Exopolitics Toronto, who's present in the room also. And uh, the headline here is uh, UN General Assembly President and Secretariat Official Ready for Action on the Extraterrestrial Presence. What is needed is one sponsoring UN member nation, one out of 192 current members of the United Nations General Assembly. Um, a senior official in the office of UN General Assembly President Miguel Descoto Brockman of Nicaragua. Um, President Brockman was the Sandinista Foreign Minister of Nicaragua from 1979 to 1990 and is currently the President of the UN General Assembly. His Chief of Cabinet, Dr. Norman Miranda of Nicaragua, with whom I had the pleasure of speaking for many hours, has confirmed to representatives of a citizen's initiative that the President, UN General Assembly President's office is ready to move forward in the General Assembly on a resolution calling for implementation of UN General Assembly Decision 33426 of 1978. This year marks the 30th anniversary of the adoption of UN General Assembly Decision 33426 which calls for, quote, and I'm quoting from the decision, the establishment of an agency or department of the United Nations for undertaking, coordinating, and disseminating the results of research into unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and related phenomena. Likewise, Juan Carlos Brandt, uh, the UN Secretariat's UN Chief of Advocacy and Special Events, who coordinated the recent United Nations panel on Battlestar Galactica. You may recall that that was in the news. Has stated publicly, quote, if there is one UN member state that would ask for a meeting on extraterrestrials, it would take place, end of quote. What is missing so far is a UN member nation to introduce the implementing resolution implementing uh, the decision taken 30 years ago to establish a UN agency on extraterrestrial issues. Grenada and its uh, forward-looking Prime Minister, Sir Eric Gehry, was instrumental in sponsoring and ensuring the passage of the 1978 decision 33426. Now, in recent years, UN member nations have begun to unofficially release as has been stated here, some of the secret files related to unidentified flying objects and extraterrestrial civilizations. These include Mexico in 2004, 
Brazil in 2005, 